Well, hey guys, how's it going? Another uh, awesome day here on the Monkey RC bench. I just wanted to uh, show you what I've been working on over the uh, last few weeks. Uh, this is a ground up build, and uh, I've been really, I've been really, really excited to get this done and show you guys. So, a um, few months, I think upwards of like three or four months ago, Injora came out with this Toyota FJ40 body. I think they call it the IR40 body and it's built around the TRX4M. And I really love this cab. I really uh, love the look of this. So I decided to uh, um, try my hand at building one, you know? And this time around, I wanted to build everything exactly how I wanted it, or at least as close as, as, close as I can with, um, with what parts I could. I try to stick to, um, all Enjora parts. There are a couple differences, but Enjora does make comparable uh, parts that I use different. If anything, it was for price point and comparative uh, reviews and reliability and stuff. So what, right, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to walk you through everything that I've done to this. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this so far. So what we got is the uh, IR40 body from Enjora. Um, Everything from the cab forward is exactly uh, how it came. Um, I added the Enduro sticker there, obviously. But in the back is where we got some differences. So what I did was, I uh, in the stock one, it's got a cage and a roll bar that come back right here. I decided to remove that because I wanted just a flatbed look. Um, also, there's a X cage that just covers up this back window and... I didn't want that. I wanted it to be nice and open and stick a nice little American flag sticker in there. And Yeah. Now, as for the bed, it's completely open. So I, with the help of my wife, mostly my wife, because she's just a whiz on her laser, she uh, designed and made some wood flatbed panels for me with my logo on it and she is awesome and amazing for doing that i was really happy with this and i guess she made two on this one piece that we had so i've got two so if anything happens to this one i can put pop this one in so yeah that's pretty that's pretty awesome I'm super excited with how that head i did have to shave it a little bit to get it to sit in there just because there was bolt holes from where the cage came up and stuff but i'm really happy with how this turned out i think it looks really super awesome so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the front and work my way back. Um, but just to get the rest of the outside done, what I have here is I have some Enjora brass bead locks. Uh, they're 1.0 size. And I've got some Little Guy Racing Parts Trench Kings. These are the 64s on it. Which I've been wanting to run these tires for a while. I've never ran them before. So I was pretty excited to get them on here and uh, see how they do. And so far, I'm digging them digging them a lot they're very sticky the one thing is is i'm not crazy about the foams that are in there so i actually have a set of injora uh, silicone inserts coming much much like the big boys that you can get in the uh, 1.9s and stuff but it's going to be small and yeah so hopefully uh, i get those soon and i'll be really excited about that all right so what we're going to do is we're going to pop that open and kind of give it a look so start at the front here what we got is my servo i went with an nsd rc rs 100 i happen to have a limited edition red one that i got from a good buddy of mine so i was happy to put it in there it's got the uh, nsd rc servo horn on it um i've got injura the new injura diamond axles on there I went with black. I think that's just a really good solid look for this. And the axles did come with the front links. Now, if you know anything about building some of these small cars, one of the best things, or at least a question I get all the time is, why does it feel like it's so hard for them to flex and turn and everything? Well, it's because they, on all the brass joints right here, they give you enough rubber, uh, rubber O-rings to put on both sides but if you put the inner one in meaning the part where there's like the flat part of me I can actually show you right here so if you can see right here it's got two spots for o-rings but the thing is is one side is wider than the other 
So what I always do is I leave the O-ring off the wide side and I only put one on. And what that does is that gives you a lot. They move more and mostly in your underside linkage when you're trying to flex and everything. It really gives it free movement that you want. So if you're ever doing projects like this and you notice that the linkage is really tight or it just binds or it's not doing what you want, and you got both of the O-rings on, take the O-ring off on one side. And I recommend using the, uh, take the one off the, the wider side. And that'll make a big difference. So, <clears throat> so yeah, diamond axles on here. Then I have Injora 59 millimeter TRX 4M shocks. Okay. This is sitting on the Injora carbon fiber low center of gravity chassis, LCG chassis, and you have to get the one that allows for lay down servos because the TRX 4M usually comes with a servo up. And I'm not a fan of that. I've never been a fan of that. And I was really happy when companies started making wider chassis to allow that to sit down, as well as making axles for the TRX 4M that allow lay down servos. So I always, I always do. Uh, lay down servos on my TRX 4Ms. Another thing about the shocks is the stock, the the brass ends right here. And if you try to, if you try to just mount it straight to the chassis, this this head right here will will hit the chassis before. So I just use a an extra brass fitting right here to kind of widen it um, out, so it actually had you know breathing room to allow this to not to bind up on that. Okay. Now, let's see, moving down, I have, you can't see it because I've got a piece of Velcro here for the battery, but I used, instead of the Injora transmission on it, I went with uh, Globact, G-L-O-B-A-C-T. Um, it's just an Amazon aluminum case transmission with uh, the low gears on there. And if you don't know anything about the TRX-4M, there is three gear sets you can put in. I think uh, the stock one is like the mid-range and then you can go up if you want to make it faster, and then you can go low if you want it to slower crawl. I always go for the low gears, which came with this transmission for a killer deal. So I went with that. Um, Motor-wise, I'm running a Furitech Venom system in there with the uh, Lizard Pro ESC back here. Um, this is my first time running this Venom motor. Most of my Terex for him, I, I honestly use the Purple and Jora motor, so... I'm really excited about this, and I just barely installed it this morning and was crawling with it, and I was really impressed with how slow and controlled it is. And they have an app. FureTech has an app where you can program all the stuff in here, which is great, including setting a higher voltage rate for your servo. And when you run uh, uh, like a really high-end servo, like an NSDRC, you want to you wanna give it the voltage it wants so you don't burn up the uh, servo. Let's see here. Um... Okay, so on the bottom here, what I've got here is I've got the Injora high clearance brass links. I always try to use brass on the, as low as possible in here. And which leads me to something I was really excited to find was a TRX4M skid made by OGRC. And it's completely solid on the bottom. So another thing about the TRX4Ms is that there is usually a hole cut out of the skid plate so that the transmission uh, plate can come through. And I don't really like that because there's like this weird gap transition between the plastic and you know your skid plate. And I've had it hang up on me before. So I was really excited to see this nice machined brass full encased bottom and not have it really droop lower than you know stock other than just what the little brass does cover. Um, I've got Injora steel drive lines on it, and I've used these on a lot of different builds. And actually, I can tell you right now, I've got a problem here because right here, I don't know if you can see it, my camera's being kind of funky right here. Not a lot of people talk about this, but drive line phasing is where you have these dog bones and how they co coincide with each other. And I can tell you right now for me putting the transmission back in, I phased it wrong. These eyes should line up perfectly. Um, if you don't do that, you can get binding problems. I didn't notice it because I was just slow crawling around, but if, I bet if I had really uh, 
I bet if I had really uh, gone up in speed and stuff, I would have noticed that. So that's something I'm going to have to fix. And it looks like it's wrong back here, too. Yeah, you always want the dog bones to match. So if, they, if they're, if they're uh, crooked off of each other in any way, it can cause binding issues. So there's a little tip for you, and I'm just realizing my mistake assembling this back together. So that's something I'm going to get to, and I will fix here in a minute. So yeah, so brass high clearance links. I really love Enjoyer's high clearance links. I went with the solid ones, meaning that there's not a rod end to thread onto it. Um, those are good if you want to stretch your uh, your chat or not your chassis, but if you want to stretch your axles a little further out. Um, I usually do that, but this time it was just such a good deal on these solid links. So we'll see how they hold up. I'm re pretty excited about it. Um, what else? Oh, I'm underneath here. Is there anything else? Nope. I think that's it. So we'll come back up top. Um, as far as the battery placement, I need to get with some of my uh, 3D printing buddies to maybe make me a tray that sits somewhere in here or even right here for my battery. But for right now, what I did was I zip tied the, uh, the cable onto it so it tucks in on the side so that it doesn't catch up here. But all I'm doing right now is I'm just sticking it just right there on top of the transmission. And um, I'm sure there's a better place for it, but for right now, while I'm getting everything tuned in, that's where she's sitting. So, and then what it does is it comes back here. We'll tip this up so you can see. I am running a Flysky FS-A3 three-channel receiver. And I always run Flysky because I've got the tried and true FS GT5 and honestly this radio runs about 10 of my rigs right now so I got rid of carting, carting around all these different radios for all these different builds and once you buy the Flysky GT5 um, all you got all you need is just the right receivers for it and the uh, what is it again the FS A3 is a very small three channel receiver. And I just need three channels for this. Servo, drive, and maybe lights down the road, we'll see. But yeah, fits in there really nice. And then like I said, I'm running the FureTech Lizard Pro for the TRX4M. And if you're shopping around for brushless ESC and brushless system, just make sure if you wanna run Traxxas batteries, it has to be able to take that, uh, that connection. Or you need to buy an adapter for it, but. Yeah, so let's see, what else? Um, the stock way that this body sits on here sat way too high. And the reason why it sat too high was the body mounts on the back here when you put it on this chassis, they had it set up a certain way. Now, I if, if you've been building one of these and you know and you've heard flip the body mounts uh, or the... What they mean by that is right here on the swivel part that actually connects to the body, you want to flip that around compared to where the instructions tell you. And that will make it sit a lot lower on the body. And if you can see, give you a nice close shot, it sits pretty low. Um, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. Like I said, I'm the only things I'm really waiting for are some silicone inserts for the tires. And um, I think that's pretty much it. I might get with a buddy who 3D prints and put a cooler back here. I think a cooler would look cool on the back of this. But um, yeah, I, uh, I'm i really I'm really impressed with it. I really like it a lot. And I'll uh, show you guys um, the, uh, the slow crawl abilities on this. Let me just turn my radio on. And then we will connect this. Also, I didn't mention it, I do run a rubber band right here around the servo and the chassis. I don't know if you can see that. That's just for right now. Um, and all that does is just keeps the suspension from unloading all the way. Because when you're on a steep incline, if this unloads to all the way, you flip a lot easier. So, for right now, in the testing phase, I just got it wrapped around there. But I'm going to do something better with that. I'll, <clears throat> I'll show you down the road what I got. But, let's see here. I will show you. Now with a brushless system, you can you can 
Um, you can get brushed motors to a slow crawl if, if you put the lower gears in and you tune in your radio and everything. But with uh, with this Lizard Pro, I gotta tell you, like, it will, like, look how slow that is. And it can even go slower. Ah, oh, wow, look at that. Isn't that just the coolest thing ever? I love this NSDRC servo in there. It's so fast. It's just so responsive. And this motor is, so far, I'm really impressed with. I'm really liking it. But yeah, I haven't done a video in a while. I've kind of been busy with some uh, some family things going on, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, what I've been working on my in-between time. And now that I installed the motor today, it was done, and I was just so excited I couldn't wait. I had to uh, show you guys what I've been working on. So when we get some good weather, because coincidentally also I finish a car, and it is terrible weather outside today. But uh, we'll get it on the backyard course, and hopefully I'll have my uh, silicone inserts by then. And yeah, we should be... Uh, we should be making some really killer videos with this same thing super soon. I am so impressed with this. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below and ask me. I try to get back to all my comments as quick as I can with as much information as I can. I'm not a uh, super tech expert when it comes to voltages and, and things like that, but I will do my best to uh, answer any questions you guys have, all right? Yeah, there it is. Well, you guys have a great day, and uh, I can't wait to uh, upload my next video, hopefully with this thing out on the backyard course. All right? All right. Till next time. See you guys later.